Find all eigenvalues and eigenvectors for the following matrix A. So, A is going to be a 3x3 three three matrix. All entries are equal to 1, except along the diagonal where they're equal to 0. What are we trying to do here? We're trying to find solutions to the equation A times V equals lambda times V, where V is a vector, lambda is a scalar. Now, there are two unknowns here, the vector v and the scalar lambda. The picture that goes with this will have our vector v in our vector space. We apply our matrix A. What comes out? If lambda is greater than 0, we have another vector pointing in the same direction as v. The length might be different. If lambda is less than 0, then our vector points in the opposite direction from v. And again, the length might be different. What about the big picture? The simplest linear transformation that we can work with would be one where, when I choose the right basis, the associated matrix is a scalar multiple of the identity matrix. Now, that matrix is going to be diagonal, same scalar down the diagonal. If the scalar is positive, the effect on the space is just going to be to rescale the same in every direction. Now, to go from there, we could ask about linear transformations, where if we find the right basis, the associated matrix is diagonal, but not necessarily with the same scalar down the diagonal. We won't always be able to do this. Now, if we can do this, then, for instance, if I have A and B down the diagonal, what this matrix does, along the x direction, it'll rescale by A. Along the y direction, it'll rescale by B. Now, first step to putting things in diagonal form, we need to find directions where we're just rescaling. So that's what our equation here does, Okay, our characteristic equation. Now, how do we make use of the equation? So, Let's run through this. So if I have AV equal to lambda V, we could push everything to one side. It gives us this equation here. I want to factor out a V. To factor a V out of this term and leave a matrix behind, I stick in the identity matrix. So we're looking at this equation here. Now, the idea is I want a non-zero solution to this equation. The only way that can happen is if the determinant of this matrix here is equal to zero. If we can solve this equation, then we'll say that lambda is an eigenvalue. We'll say that v is an eigenvector for the eigenvalue lambda. Here's how we proceed. First, we look for eigenvalues. So we set up the characteristic polynomial. That's going to be the determinant lambda i minus a. So here, it's going to be a polynomial in lambda. You'll note I've switched the lambda i and the a. This is going to guarantee that the highest power of lambda has a plus 1 in front of it. Now, if we find the zeros for this polynomial, those are going to be precisely our eigenvalues. For the next step, we take our eigenvalues, we put each lambda in the equation, lambda i minus a, and then we find the null space. So usually, you're going to want a basis for the null space, and that's how we give our answer. Now, we're not done yet. We should check our work. How do we do that? Well, we use the characteristic equation. A times V equals lambda V. So we're going to take each vector in part two, apply A to it. We're expecting to get the eigenvalue times the original vector back. If that holds up then your work is checked. Let's take a look at our special case. So we start by looking for the eigenvalues. So we compute the determinant of lambda i minus a. So minus a is just taking the ones in our previous matrix, change them ones into minus ones. For the lambda i, we're just going to put lambdas down the diagonal. So we get this matrix here. Now, if I want to take the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix, 
We can multiply down each diagonal going to the right, take the sum, then we subtract when we multiply down each diagonal to the left. So we'll have lambda cubed minus one, minus one. Going in the other direction, we're gonna have lambda times one. So we get a minus lambda. Then we'll get minus lambda for the other two diagonals. So we wind up with lambda cubed minus three lambda minus two. Now, we have to factor this to find the zeros. So if we just go with the rational roots test, we'll be looking at possibilities in plus minus one, plus minus two. We know minus one is gonna work. If I put minus one in this matrix here, the rows are all the same, which means the determinant will be zero. So minus one is definitely in our list. Now, once I have that minus one, okay, you can either, okay, if you know synthetic division, we can break this down using that, or you can long divide, and then that's more work. So with the synthetic division, when you work it out, you'll have, okay, the roots of minus one, so it gives me a factor of lambda plus one. What's left over is lambda squared minus lambda minus two, and then that factors into lambda minus two, lambda plus one. So our zeros are gonna be minus one, two, and minus one. So the eigenvalues are lambda equals two, and lambda equal to minus one, and we say with multiplicity two. For our next step, let's consider our eigenvalue equal to minus one. We set up our equation lambda i minus a, solve minus i minus a. I wanna find a basis for the null space. Now, our matrix is just the matrix full of minus ones, so we can row reduce that to a row of ones, and then everything else is zero. Now, this gives me the equation x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals zero. So here I have one pivot variable, x1, two free variables, x2 and x3. The procedure for finding a basis of your null space, take your free variables, you set one of them equal to one, set all the rest equal to zero, and then proceed. So for here, I'm gonna have x2 equal to one, x3 equal to zero, and x2 equal to zero, x3 equal to one. So here we get two basis factors. That's our answer for the eigenvalue lambda equals minus one. Now I check, so I take our original matrix A, we apply it to our basis vector. What comes out is gonna be our eigenvalue times our basis vector. So here this is just minus one times the vector that I started with. Similarly, for our second basis vector, we apply a to it, then you know it, we get minus one times our vector back, so that checks out. For the eigenvalue lambda equals two, we have a trick that's worth pointing out. So if in our matrix, the sum of each row is always the same, then that sum is gonna be an eigenvalue with eigenvector one, one, one. Now, the idea here, if I multiply a row of our matrix, times one, one, one. All we're doing is taking the sum. So in our case here, you'll note, if I multiply A by one, 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 what comes out is just gonna be the sum of each row. So I'll have two, two, two. And then that's just saying we have twice our original vector. So two is gonna be an eigenvalue with eigenvector one, one, one. Now, we could find that the long way and we'll get the same answer. So if I take the null, of 2i minus a, we're looking at the matrix 2 minus 1 minus 1, you fill in the rest. We can row reduce that. In reduced row echelon form, I'm gonna have 1, 0 minus 1, 0, 1 minus 1, and then all zeros. So here, we're gonna have two pivots. So that means one free variable. So x3 is gonna be our free variable. So we'll have x1 equals x3, x2 is equal to x3, if I let x3 be equal to one, we get back our vector one, one, one.